What's up, everybody? It's Joe Garcia here with uh, CyberArk, and I'm going to show you how I'm using CyberArk's PaaS solution, including EPV and AIM, in order to fully integrate with Ansible Tower in order to provide bi-directional security for you from a privileged access perspective. We're going to be pulling a private SSH key down from EPV utilizing AIM. Use that to log into a remote host via Ansible Tower. Create a LAMP stack on that host. Take the MySQL database user that's created, onboard it back into EPV so that it can be managed automatically from there. And then within our PHP script that will test out the whole entire process, we'll be using AIM CCP there and REST API in order to fetch that password securely, utilizing our AIM centralized credential provider and provide it back to the PHP script that I created. Now this is the endpoint we're gonna be targeting, RHEL 01, it is running RHEL 7.5. Uh, we are going to deploy a LAMP stack there, but right now we don't have anything going. And even if I flip over to VMware Fusion and log into the actual box as root, we can go ahead and run which uh, HTTPD, nothing there, which PHP, nothing there, which MySQL, nothing there either. So we haven't even deployed this LAMP stack yet. All that we've got is a, is a ready node to start taking commands over SSH from Ansible Tower. All right, so let me go ahead and exit out of here and then close this window, and then we'll take a look at what we've got running here. Uh, inside of EPV itself, looking through our PVWA, I can search for our demo account, which doesn't show up. It hasn't been onboarded or created yet for our MySQL database. So what I've gone ahead and done is created a couple safes, first and foremost, that we're going to use throughout this process. I've got my dev safe for REST API accounts that we're going to use for the CyberArk REST API. I've got a safe for my Linux root SSH keys that will be the safe we're grabbing this private key from to log into rel one as well as a uh, dev uh, safe that my MySQL local users that are created for database access are stored in and managed from there as well. Now on each of these safes, I have the AIM accounts required uh, permission for least privilege in order to view. So in terms of the REST accounts, we've got the CCP web service as well as our components provider and Ansible will be using these in the playbook. So the Ansible application ID has been applied here. The next safe that we have is our root SSH keys, which should also be used by Ansible. Again, and you'll see Ansible, the CCP web service, and our provider, our app provider, are all permissioned here for that access. And then finally, our database, our db.php script, that PHP script that needs to have a backend connection, needs to be able to access the MySQL local user for that database connection. But also Ansible needs access to the safe in order to onboard it in the first place. So we're gonna see a little bit different members here. We're gonna have the CCP web service. We're gonna have our service account for Ansible to use for the REST API permissioned here to be able to create and add that account as well as update the permission, I mean the properties after we add that account. We've got our provider, our app provider server set up here for components. It's got least privilege, but then we've also added an additional app ID on top of Ansible called Hello World PHP. This is the application ID that our PHP script is going to use this way, we can segregate the auditing and see what our PHP script is fetching in relation to what Ansible may or may not be fetching as well. So when we go back into our audit logs or we have an audit request from, from our auditors that we love so dearly, we can answer them and say, yes, this is the application that was accessing the secret. It was either Ansible or it was PHP. Uh, it, there's no questions as to which part of the process is doing this. So that's the safe setup. I've already showed you the applications I have set up here, but just to show you again, we've got our AIM web service, Ansible, and Hello World PHP setup, and you can see the allowed machines here give the whole tail of the tape. AIM web service is set up for components, Ansible set up for my Ansible Tower instance, uh, and then RHEL is set up for uh, RHEL01. Uh, by IP, DNS, as well as host name. So I've got all of my bases covered. This last IP was added onto Ansible for testing from my local host. 
Uh, so we can go ahead into this and actually remove that one. I haven't gotten as far as to set up client certificate authentication, but I'll definitely record that when I do. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this. And now we've got it uh, pretty, pretty least privileged. My endpoint can't even touch it anymore. Uh, so from this perspective, we've got everything we need. We've got our service Ansible REST, a, a username here, as well as our root SSH key here that we're going to be snagging uh, over the API and over AIM from our playbooks. So this is currently out on GitHub right now. I've been just posting it live publicly to GitHub. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh this and we should see my latest commit here. Um, we've got AIM ready to go. Uh, this aim.yaml file is very long, but it's in two parts. There's two plays to this. Our first play is done on the local host where we're going to retrieve the private key from CyberArk, and we're going to retrieve our REST API service account for later on from CyberArk as well at the same time. We'll create a temp file using the temp file module for the SSH private key contents, and we'll write them there. Uh, and we'll always want to delegate to the local host so that this is done at the local host level and not done um, you know, somewhere that we cannot control. We need it to be able to access uh, these results and the temp key path, et cetera. Then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna set it as a fact. This way I can easily pass it across playbooks in this file uh, without having to encounter any undefined variable errors. I also set the username and the password for a REST API user to a fact as well. And then I'm gonna hit all hosts and gather facts as usual, uh, but I'm gonna be giving a host var from localhost back up here, our SSH private key, our REST user, our REST user pass, as well as just defining some very initial variables, our MySQL username, our MySQL password. Uh, the cool thing about EPV is that on a safe, or I'm sorry, on a platform ID that handles the automatic management of these accounts, we can set it to change on add. So we can go ahead and statically define this because the second it goes into EPV, it's changing its password anyways. And then we'll be using AIM going forward to get that password, regardless of what it is. We won't care at that point because we're not running around with hard-coded credentials anymore, just for this initial phase. And then we're going to be using the CyberArk modules uh, role that's available on Ansible Galaxy for uh, authenticating to the REST API uh, later on in this. Uh, the CyberArk credential uh, plugin here is also comes a part of that module and will get installed. So that doesn't require a calling of the role in the first place. So that's why we didn't do it up here. Uh, but we're going to install Apache and PHP as well as the MySQL plugin for PHP. Set up some web role specific dependencies here. Get some libse manage for Python going on so we can fix uh, SE Linux as we go through. Start HTTPD. We'll set up uh, SE Linux so that we can get connections from remote databases in case we want it. And then I just create a quick Hello World page just for my own sanity in case the later db.php page fails for any reason. I can at least see if I got the, the web server up and running by this index. We're going to install MariaDB as well as MySQL Python. That'll let us interact with uh, MySQL easily through this playbook going forward. And then we're going to set up MySQL to be able to start on any port. And we're going to have to monkey with SE Linux to do that. Uh, so that's very easy to do in this playbook. Start the MySQL service. We'll create a demo database that we'll go ahead and dump a message into later on. And we'll create a database user. And this username and password was the one that we set earlier. And we're gonna go ahead then and authenticate to CyberArk Web Services, our REST API, in order to receive an authentication token in return that we can go ahead and use instead of a username and password. So this is a REST username and password that I grabbed in an earlier play that we're now feeding in through the REST API and sending across and receiving back a CyberArk session token that I will set as a fact for easy use later. Here, we're going to use the URI module in order to onboard that MySQL local user into EPV. We'll use in the authorization header that, that fact that has our authentication token set to it. And we're, we're going to use post in order to do this, obviously. But we're looking for a status code of 201. Uh, status code 201 uh, in our REST API means that the object was successfully created. And the body defines what that object will be. We've got all of the information here. Uh, pulling from variables, the secret information, and then we're going to, at the bottom here, uh, no log, but I haven't added that in quite yet. And then go ahead and log off of the session. 
I have a dump.sql in this repository in the files directory that we're going to use in order to create a message in our demo uh, database. We're gonna create a messages table with one message in it that will display on db.php if we get successful authentication to the backend. And then this is me using the shell to insert that sample data using the MySQL username and password that I know is still exists uh, in the same form because it takes longer than this play in order to change that password. So I'm gonna quickly dump in my SQL information, restart Apache, and then install my db.php script that you can find in the files directory. I'm just gonna copy it over to where it belongs for a destination. So that's our aim.yaml uh, play. As far as files are concerned, db.php is rather simple. We're using curl here and hitting our CCP URL. You're going to use the app ID, hello world PHP, look at our MySQL local user save, and pull back this object, MySQL demo user. Uh, and we're going to then take that response, decode it. Uh, from JSON so that we get a PHP array out of it. And then down here in our connection, as long as we don't get any curl errors back, we will use uh, this connection string here in order to securely connect to the database backend and echo back our message that we select from the demo database. And you can see here, I'm just referencing the response object as if it was a PHP array. And we're going to get our username and then content is the key that we store the password under in the JSON blob response. So that's actually going to be either the contents of a key or a password or something like that. Uh, so it's called content in this context. So that's my db.php that will get installed and then use aim CCP for connection. This is the dump.sql file. So we're just inserting into the message table of the demo database this message here. If you're seeing this message, we've successfully connected. Otherwise, we'll get an error. And hopefully, we don't get an error. Uh, so let's go ahead back to the root here. We've seen the EPV stuff. Now we've got uh, my get set up here in projects within Ansible Tower. I'm logged in as admin right now. You can see that the URL is the URL to get I'm on the master and I'm updating that revision on every launch. But regardless, let's go ahead and just refresh it real quick so that we can see if there's any new revisions. We're at 4B8 now, C7B, so there was a new revision that we just updated. As far as credentials go, I've got an SSH private key in here that we're going to be pulling from CyberArk, but that was just for my initial testing. We're going to be using this dummy credential, which doesn't have a username, doesn't have a password, doesn't have any information. We're just required to give a, a credential uh, in order on a job template. So we give a dummy credential with no information in it to kind of get past that. From an inventory's perspective, I'm running on my NUC lab. I have one host, that's Rello one. It's reporting in fine. It's been running jobs fine. So we're green there and good to go. From a template's perspective, this is where we set up the job template and then click the cool rocket to launch the job. Uh, but if we dive in to look at the details here, uh, the inventory is going to be ran against Rello one in that NUC lab inventory you saw. Uh, and then so I associate the project and I'm targeting our aim.yaml file that I showed you. And then I apply the dummy credential and that's literally it. From there, we can click launch and then watch it go. And I'll kind of talk you through what's going on as we go through this. So first and foremost, I've got index.php ready to go here, uh, but it's gonna run through and play localhost and it's not gonna really give us any info back. And that's because I've got no log set to yes so that we're not seeing any information that's being passed around here from the secrets perspective. Now we're logged into rel01 using that private key that we got from EPV and we're going to install Apache and PHP. That's gonna take a second, but we should be able to come in here to our root user and check out activities for this and see that we've been retrieving passwords and things like that as the provider user here. So since the provider user has retrieved and cached this, it's going to continue to use this cached key until uh, we're able to uh, refresh the SSH key information here. However, in the other audit logs, it's going to be logging all of this information coming from our application ID if I were to run a report or anything like that. But if you ever wondered why it doesn't it pull all the time and log on the activity, well, that's because we're using AIMS cache and not pounding the vault every time I'm requesting one of these secrets. So we're still installing Apache, PHP, and also uh, PHP-MySQL in the background. This is the longest task 
uh, to actually get going here. So it'll take a couple minutes for it to run, but after that, it should kick through and not really pause again and take a quick second until we get to around the MariaDB section where we're actually going to install MySQL. Uh, so we've got Apache PHP and PHP MySQL installed successfully on the RHEL box. That means I should be able to bump over there now in which uh, HTTPD and get a path as well as which PHP and get a path to. I don't want to do that because I know that this console output is going to start chugging away here any second. So we'll give it a sec. There we go. So now we've got our web role specific dependencies in there. We started Apache, the service. We configured SE Linux. We created our index.php stage now, or start page. Now we're installing MariaDB, and that's going to take a sec. So if I come over here and refresh, we've got hello world. So we know that HTTPD is good, PHP is good. We're able to pull back that hello world index page. But at the end of the day, the final product is db.php. So we want to get MySQL going here so that we can start to connect our db.php script to a database backend to really prove out everything that we're trying to deploy here. So there we go. MariaDB got in there. We were able to configure SE Linux to start MySQL on any port. We've got a new database, a new database user. It's onboarded to EPV. We copied the sample data to the local file system in the temp directory, restarted Apache, installed that database connection script, and we're done. So we should be able to come over here now, uh, check accounts, and then look for demo. And there's our demo user right there. Now we've added our demo user. We should be able to see, yep, service Ansible REST was able to onboard it through the REST API and give it all of the information that we need in order to pull up the db.php. Now this is the final test. Can we use AIM CCP in the PHP script in order to successfully authenticate to EPV as an application pull back this password and make a database connection and get the proper message. Let's see. db.php, let's do this. Hey, look at that. If you're seeing this message, we have successfully connected to PHP, or su successfully connected PHP to our backend MySQL database. We're pulling the message right out of the database. We can log in now to RHEL. Uh, so I will log in completely separate into rel one and then we can witch HTTPD, we can cat out var www.htmldb.php. You can see this is, whoops, this is the script that is running right now. I, sh I guess I should less that, huh? See? So it is literally pulling from, from there, okay? and then echoing out the statement. So that is what I wanted to show you guys. We have successfully onboarded everything into EPV. We've pulled stuff we need from EPV, but at the end of the day, guess what? I can now check this playbook in, not have to worry about any secret information being leaked in here. Oh yeah, there's a hard-coded password here, but who cares? We change that upon adding it into the safe. I don't care. Let people see the initial password CyberArk1. I bet everybody who's watching this video right now already knew that was our password that we love at CyberArk. So with that said, I wanted to show everybody this real cool, uh, quick and easy way of being able to deal with identity throughout Ansible Tower and how you can extend the benefits of CyberArk's PaaS core solution with AIM on top uh, to further secure these playbooks that our discovery and audit tool, DNA, is finding hard-coded secrets within for you today. So definitely go out to cyberarc.com, get DNA, run it on your system, look for Ansible playbooks with hard-coded credentials, and I just gave you an easy way of securing them. This is Joe Garcia signing off. 
I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this, and I will talk to you soon. See you guys.